prophet is the image that its maker should carve it. Molded image. Okay, welcome back. Shall we begin with prayer? To continue. So we have seen that we need the preparation when we come to the midnight ride. Otherwise, the flood will come, right? And this is the uh, state power who wants to kill. And we saw it's also the destruction of Jerusalem. Um, it's the sword. It's the fury. It's all the other punishments. Right, and we have seen that uh, the flood is caused through the abomination which is the wickedness. <laughs> right, and as we have sung just now we want to get to heaven so we have to get into the ark in order to get to heaven so let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and we read verse 20 first So what we have looked at so far was Leviticus 26, which was the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Which was the destruction of Jerusalem through Babylon, right? So as we go along, now from now forward, I want to deal with Deuteronomy 28, which is the destruction of Jerusalem done through Rome. <laughs> and we will see that is a parallel chapter, uh, basically a perfect parallel. Okay. Do you want to read verse 20? 28, 20. Yes. 28, 20. Uh, <laughs> Just 20. Yes. Okay, so it says here that the Lord will send a curse because of what? Because of the wickedness, right? So what was the curse that the Lord sent because of the wickedness? The flood, right? So, speaking about this time period here. So, if we read verse 22 and 23. So it says here 
it mentions all these uh, punishments that the Lord will bring upon them and one of them is the sword, right? We have seen in uh, Ezekiel 8, uh, 9 and Leviticus 26 that the sword is the punishment that they receive for worship their son. <laughs> But I want to focus upon verse 23. Because it said that it says that, that, that the heaven will be as what? Brass and the earth as iron. So it says here that when you come here, right? Heaven is brass, earth is iron. So we see, if we go by the statue, which is also right there on the chart, that brass and iron is the third and the fourth kingdom. So what I want you so what I want you to understand is that the Bible always takes the third and the fourth and puts them together. So we saw in Egypt we had three plays leading you to the uh, thing of God. Right, and the finger of God is this investigative judgment, right? So we see how the investigative judgment begins here at the midnight cry, marked through the finger of God. But what was with the fourth play? What was specific about the fourth? There was a distinction made, right? Between those who heeded the warning and those who don't. And according to the parable of Matthew 25, when is the distinction made? At the midnight cry, right? So we see how the third and the fourth both mark the midnight cry here. In, uh, I think it's the second commandment. The Lord visited the iniquity of the Father until the witch. Third and fourth generation. So we saw at the midnight cry the visitation takes place, right? In Amos. Okay. Uh, in Amos chapter 1, I think it's about seven or eight times that the Lord says three and four transgressions. <laughs> so the Bible specifically takes the third and the fourth and puts them together. So Greece is a symbol for the whole world, right? Which is the Ten Kings. Okay. What about Rome? Was is Rome right also a representation of the whole world? Yes, ten horns, right? So you see how the ten kings, right? They can be represented through the symbol of Greece, but also of the ten horns of Rome. <laughs> So I, I hope that for now at least, right, you get a clue of what I want to say with it. Because as we go along, I hope that I will be able to explain this. So I said that we will go to the story of Samuel, um, Goliath. And it says in verse 1 in 1 Samuel chapter 17. 
Samuel ya kwanza. First Samuel 17 verse 1. Samuel ya kwanza 17 aya ya kwanza inasema wakati huo wa Filisti walikusanya majeshi yao kwa vita na wakakusanyika huko soko ulio mji wa Yuda wakatua uh, wakatua uh, kati ya soko na Ezeka uh, katika F FS da Mimu So it tells us here that the Philistines they have gathered themselves together right Inasema kwa wa Filisti walijisanya And what were their plan what did they want to do Walinuia kufanya nini we we'll go against Israel, right? So in verse 16, <laughs> it tells us that the Philistines that present or the Philistine presented themselves for 40 days, right? So for 40 days, Goliath was walking up and down threatening God's people. So which test is this? The first phase or the second? The first, right? So for 40 days, you see the first phase. So the first phase And Goliath is walking up and down. <coughs> so in Psalms uh, 83, we read verse 1 and 2, uh, 1 to 3. Or actually, we can read 1 to 5. Remember the quote from Solomon again 1.5 to 2. Point, or 1.4 to 2.1. It says that when the Catholic or the, the nominal Adventists and the nominal churches deliver God's people up to the Catholics. Are God's people famous and known by the Catholics? No, little known, right? Says they are obscure, meaning hidden. So prior to the point where you are delivered up, you are hidden. So let's read now the first verses. Or let's just read verse. One and two for, to begin with. Eighty-three, verse one and two. Hey, Mungu, zako wanafanya gasia na wakuchukiao Okay, so they have made a tumult here, the enemies, right? And what did they, what have they lifted up? The head, right? What is the head that the kings lift up? The papacy. Right, Sister White says, under one great head, the papacy. So when is it that the papacy comes back on the scene? The Sunday law, right? So right at this point here, the papacy is coming back. Right? And they make a tumult. In verse 3, right, we read that they have made crafty counsel against God's people against the hidden ones. <laughs> yeah, just read it. So we see that they make this council and they want to go against God's people. But they are hidden. Right? Remember the first phase when Nebuchadnezzar set up the image, he was threatening them. Right? And here where they basically 
then uh, get thrown into the fiery furnace. So, and if you read further on, verse 6 till 8, it speaks about, it mentions 10 kings. Right, it's the 10 horns that came together. <laughs> right, which is the seventh kingdom. So what you see is that Goliath, right, he's walking up and down, he's threatening God's people. So, but on the 40th day, who comes? David, right? So in 1 Samuel 17 verse uh, 12, we read something about David. Yes. 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 Seventeen twelve. Seventeen twelve. Seven uh Kumina Saba Kumina Milina Sema. Basi Daudi Alikua Mwana wa Yule Ma Ma Fra so, what is specific about David? Which son was he? The eighth, right? So, and David, right, was uh, also the promise that is given in Isaiah chapter 11, right? Right, it's the root that comes out of Jesse. <laughs> and who is this root perfectly? I mean, whom was he typified? Christ, right? So David was a type for Christ. And type typif Christ typifies God's people at the end of the world. So how many people have been in the ark? Eight. And David is the eight. Right, so you see how David is somebody represents somebody who is in the ark. So Jacob or the virgins, when do they fall to sleep? When the tearing time begins, right? So right here to Sunday law, that's the tearing time that begins. And when do they wake up? And the midnight cry. So Jacob, he falls to sleep. And he's dreaming about the ladder, right? So Sister White says Jacob's ladder is Peter's ladder. How many steps are there on Peter's uh, ladder? Eight. What is the eighth step? What is the eighth step? And P, P, uh, second Peter, no, chapter one. We have to go there. Second Peter chapter one verse let's just read seven to make it short. Waraka wa pili wa petero ya kwanza am lango wa kwanza aya saba inasema na katika na kati uta wa uta 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 wa ua asamahan seven and eight. Oh, inasema nakati utaua wenu upendo wa ndugu na katika upendo 
na katika upendano wa ndugu upendo you read 7 and 8 okay. nane nasema maana mambo maana mambo hayo yakiwa kwenu ni na kuja tele uh, ya wafanya uh, nini kuwa si wabibu wala si wabibu <laughs> siona matunda kwa m- so what is the last thing mentioned here in verse 7? Charity, right? And it says in verse 8, when you have this, you will not be unfruitful, right? So charity is the fruit that you are to bring forth at the top of the ladder. What is what is charity? Love, right? So what does Christ say in John uh, 15? What is the fruit, the law, the greatest law? Yeah, to lay down your life for your brother, right? So it's the cross, right? So David represents somebody who goes to the cross. But he's the eighth. He has charity. Right? He goes into the ark. And that's why he can face Goliath. You follow the thought? Yes. All right. So David the eighth, right? So he faces Goliath. But what is specific about Goliath? Because when he goes before Goliath, what does Goliath want to do with him? He wants to kill him, right? So what is David facing? Daudi. Yeah, right. Daudi na kifo. First or second phase? Kwanza ama Second phase, right? Kiango cha pili. So here you see Goliath after 40 days is the second phase. Ah, tunaona Goliath kwenye hii kiango cha pili. So, but look, let's see what is so specific about Goliath. Tuangalie ni jambo gani la dhana kuhusu Goliath. Verse 4 and 7. Ah, uh, 2 7. And I want the answer from you, right? So please pay attention to what is written. Atataka jibu kutoka kwenye, kutoka aya ya nine hadi saba. Inasema, nipa katoka shuja katika kambi ya wafilisti, aliaitwa goliati, ana wagati, ambaye urefu wake ulikuwa mikono sita na shibira moja. Alikuwa na chapeo ya shaba kichwani. Tena amevaa Dari uh, ya shaba na uvazi wake ile dari ya shaba ulikuwa shekina uh, elfu tano na shaba za shaba tena ameva mabamba ya shaba miguuni mwake naye alikuwa na mkuki wa shaba katika kati ya kati ya mabega mabega yake ana mti wa fumo lake na mti wa mfumo lake ulikuwa uh, kama mti wa amfumaji kwa kichwa na kichwa cha mikuki uh, wake kilikuwa shekina mia sita na chuma uzito wake na mtu aliyemchukulia alie ngano yake akamtangulia so what is specific about Goliath how does his armor look like his brass right uh, and his spear is iron. Goliath alikuwa na ile shaba kwenye kifua chake na ile ngano yake ilikuwa ya chuma. So it says that he is brass and iron, right? Inasema ni shaba na chuma. So go back to Deuteronomy 28. Turudi katika kitabu cha In verse 23. Mkumbu la Torati 8 says thy heaven that is over the head shall be brass and the earth that is under thee shall be iron so when you come here to your second test and you commit the wickedness then who's killing you Goliath right so but David 
lakini Daudi who is in the ark baya kwa ndani ya ile safari right he will kill Goliath right so it's the choice Goliath is either going to kill you or you're going to kill Goliath <coughs> so I hope you can see these connections so when David now comes here right Goliath is mocking him right right but what is David saying to Goliath. Lakini Daudi anamwambia nini Goliath? Let's go to 1 Samuel. Ah, tuende katika kitabu cha Samuel wa kwanza. 1 Samuel 17. Kitabu cha Samuel wa kwanza. And we read verse um 46. Ah, uh, aya Kumi na saba aya shiruna aya arbaini na sita inasema siku hii ya leo wana atakuwa mkononi mwangu nami nita nita kupiga na kuko na kukondoa na kondole na kukondole kichwa chako nami leo nita kuwa nita wapa ndege wa angani na wanyama wa inchi mizoga ya jeshi ya wafilisti uh, ili kwamba dunia nzima wajue ya kuwa yuko Mungu katika Israeli. So what does he say? The Lord has Anasema nini? Delivered you into my hand, right? Ya kuwa Mungu amekuweka mikononi mwangu. So the Lord gave David the victory over Goliath. Ah, uh, kuwa Mungu alimpea Daudi amshinde Goliath. But remember those who commit abomination. Ah, uh, kumbuka kwa wale ambao utafanya hiyo uovu. It says Goliath shall slay thee. Ah, uh, Goliath atamwangamiza. It says in your carcasses shall lie here, right? Na mizoga yenu atalala atalala hapo. Yes. Leviticus 26. Ah, uh, kumbukumbu la Torati. Read verse 44. Ah. Uh, so what is the Goliath telling David? Goliath anamwambia nini Daudi? Inasema, Mfilisti akamwambia Daudi, "Njoo huku kwangu. Nyuma yako nitawapa ndege kwa angani na nyama yako kwa nyama kwa mituni." So it says here that I will give your flesh, your carcass to whom? The fowls, right? Inasema kuwa nyama yako nitawapa ndege. So Goliath is threatening David to receive the same punishment like all the wicked ones whom he already has slain. But David says not so. No. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. I want to make the point right now. Deuteronomy 28 verse 24 to 26 remember Goliath says I will take your carcass and throw it to the fowls <laughs> who's ruling Goliath Satan right does Satan know prophecy yes right so when Satan comes and threatens you to make your uh, throw your carcass to the fowls, he has that from the Bible, right? Because he also knows that he can't do anything which is outward of God's word. So it's the Lord who allowed him to take your car the carcass and throw it to the fowls. But Satan also knows that there is a promise given to the faithful ones. So in Deuteronomy 28, 24 to 26, we see where Satan knows this thing about the fowls and the carcasses. Twenty-four to 
uh, kwa njia moja lakini utakimbia mbele ya kwa njia saba na uta, utatukwa huko na huko uh, katika falme zote za, dunia, za duniani na mzoga wako uta, utakuwa chakula wa ndege cha, chakula cha ndege wote wa angani na wanyama wote duniani pasiwe na mtu wa kuwafukuza Right, so it says here clearly in verse 26 that the carcass shall be meat to the fowls of the earth. In verse 24 it says that this is destruction. So Goliath claims to be able to destroy David. So in Matthew 24, in verse 28, if we go by context, which we won't do now, you can see that it's talking about the time period from the midnight cry. And it says, for wheresoever the carcasses there will the eagle be gathered together. <laughs> So who's the eagle that came here and devoured the carcasses? Uh, remember it's talking about Jerusalem, right? Rome, right? So you see that when your dead bodies are lying here, it's this Rome, right? It's this Goliath who wants to come and devour you. And but we said at the beginning that this that Goliath doesn't make any distinction between righteous and unrighteous, right? That's why he says to David, you know, I'm gonna do the same thing to you as I've done to those guys. Okay, how about people dead in here? Is there a symbol for it? Yes, which? He yes, I was just thinking about Revelation 11. It says that dead bodies, the carcass shall lie in here, right? So their carcasses are lying here. So you see. Unrighteous carcass and righteous carcass lying there, right? Right, they go to the cross, they die. So, but the righteous says that they won't be touched. Why? Why do the why do the fowls don't touch the righteous? Something to do with the eighth. What happened on the eighth day? In the Jewish custom? Circumcision, right? Okay, when Abraham had to circumcise his household, what did he enter into? A covenant. So when you have a you end you have to present something? I'm not saying. Okay, then go ahead. Okay, I said the eighth day is circumcision. Right? And when Abraham had to circumcise his household, <coughs> he entered into covenant with God. So it's the covenant that protects you. Go to Genesis 15. And let's read verse 7 to 10. Let's read verse 7 to 10. Aya saba nasema kisha akamwambia mimi ni bwana ah nilie 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 kuleta, nilie kuleta kutoka uru wa wakaldayo nikupe nchi hii ili uirithi akasema e bwana Mungu anipataje kujua ya kwamba nita nita, nita irithi akamwambia an ut, Unipatie andama wa miaka mitatu na mbuzi mke wa miaka mitatu na kondoo mume wa miaka mitatu 
na huu na mwana njiwe tu okay. akampatia aka, aka huo wote akawapasua vipande viwili akawa aka, 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 akaweka kila kipande uh, kuelekea mwe, kuelekea wenzake na ndege wakapasuliwa Okay so what is Abraham asking for Ndege hawakupasuliwa samahani Abraham anaulizia nini kwa hizo vifungu za kwanza What does he say to the Lord Anaambia nini Mungu I have no child right Anamwambia hana mwana So what does he ask for Anaulizia nini For the seed right Anaulizia ile mbegu au zao Who is the seed Ni nani ndiye huyo zao It's Christ, right? Ni Kristo. Okay, when Christ came, where did he go? A Kristo alipokuja alienda wapi? To the cross, right? Alienda msalabani. That's the covenant, right? Hiyo ndio agano. Without the cross there's no new covenant. Ah bila ile msalaba hakuna hii agano jipya. So when he receives the promise, what's the next thing Abraham does? Unapopokea ahadi nini ambacho Abraham anapata? An offering, right? Anapata ile sadaka. So what are all the offerings in the Bible typifying? Ile sadaka zote bila inaashiria nini? The cross, right? Inaashiria msalaba. Okay, so Christ was our example. Kristo alikuwa mfano wetu. He went to the cross. Alienda msalabani. Right, and that's how the promise was uh, ratified. Na hivyo ndivyo ambavyo hiyo ahadi ilijionyesha. So in order that we can be partake of the promise, where do we need to go? To the cross. Aniposa tu wewe Niposa tuwe wana wa ahadi ya tupasa tuende msalabani. So the Lord enters into covenant with Abraham and Abraham brings an offering, right? Mungu ana Abraham anaingia katika agano na Mungu na Mungu anampea hiyo agano. What is what is it? What what, what is this offering? Ah uh, hii sadaka ni nini? In relation to what we have spoken about. Uh, kulingana na yale ambayo tumeongelea. It's a carcass, right? It's a dead body. Lying on the uh, lying there. And what happens in verse 11? The fowls come, right, and want to devour it. But what is with A what does Abraham do? He frays them away. So those who come here, right, and they are in the new covenant promise. Right, and the covenant promise given to Abraham is the same promise given to Noah. They are in the ark. Right, and that's why the fowls will be frayed away. Iron and brass can't do them anything. You follow me? Yes. Okay. So, because remember, uh, did it say this in Deuteronomy 28? One second. Because in Deuteronomy 28 it says, Thy carcass shall be meat to the fowls, right? And no man shall fray them away. So you see that if you are under the promise, Abraham will fray them away. Uh, But if you are not under the promise, they won't be frayed away. <laughs> so remember, there was the rich man and Lazarus, right? One went into the hell, the other one went into heaven. One crossed the chasm, the other one not. Where was Abra uh, where was Lazarus? Lazarus In the bosom of Abraham, right? He had this birth experience. So David is somebody who represents uh, some uh, is representing somebody under the new covenant promise. And that's why he faces God. So if we go back to 1 Samuel 17. Right, and I want to read this in the English now because I want to make some points. Beginning in 34. 
It says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept the, his father's sheep, and there came what? A lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when the, he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and I smote him, and slew him, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. This and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. So, whom did David already slew? The lion and the bear, right? Okay, the lion is gold, the bear is silver. So, whom did he slew already? Ah, gold and silver. What is left? Brass and iron. So remember we said that at the third one, right, which is the brass, has a role to play in this fourth here. Right, it just changes the symbol. The woman sits on it, yes. So David standing here and saying, This and this I've dealt with. I've passed the first phase. Now only have to deal with the second. And when David tells uh, Saul, right? I've slew the lion and the bear. <laughs> he says, the ones, uh, this Philistine will be as one of them. So David has the assurance that the Lord is with him, right? So when David says this, it said then in verse 37, David said more, the Lord has delivered me out of the path of the lion and of the path of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, the Lord be with thee. So the Lord is with David when he meets Goliath. Right? And Brahma correctly said, when you come here, it's the woman that sits upon it, right? So, but who is the doing the persecuting part? The woman? No, the state powers, right? But the woman tells the state to do so. <laughs> so let's read the next quote. Because Sister White will tie this together with us. We are in... Uh, no, you have to go down. Yes, write this one. It says, Through the dark ages, that long night of ignorance and superstition, the claim of the papacy to superior, superiority and supremacy was con succeeded by emperors and kings. Although God had not had sanctioned no such concession and raised up men to dispute, dispute the claim and to break the Romish yoke from the church of God. So which period is it speaking about? But the period when the woman sits upon the kings, right? So it's right this this uh, this time period here. <coughs> it's the fourth, right? And she says here that some have broken free from the Romish yoke, right? What is the what is the yoke a symbol for? Bondage, right? So which covenant was the bo the bondage covenant? The old one. So they break free from the old covenant, right? They are circumcised, they are in the ark. And they meet whom? What does it say? They meet Rome, right? They meet the papacy, so to say. But when you're brought before kings, do you stand before the pope or before the kings? 
before the kings, right? So it says here, through his appointed agencies, God summoned the church to reassert her independence. And in the strength of God, he, she stood forth in the liberty wherewith Christ had made her what? Free. So it says that she was in the strength of God, right? Who gave David the strength? God. Right? He broke free from the yoke. <laughs> it says further on, she broke away from the papal yoke and with the word of God in her hand met whom? The giant evil of Romanism, even as David met Goliath in the name of heaven, using a sling and a few pebbles stones. So, when you meet the papacy here by going before the kings, before whom do you go? Goliath, right? You meet iron and brass. So, I see, I hope you can see how perfectly this is matching up here. Really. For me, it's, it's very nice if you go through these things. So, I want to bring now another illustration. <coughs> then we're going to close. Because remember, Gold and silver, line and bear is gone, right? <laughs> Remember, during this week we went through Daniel's age, right? Or at least we mentioned it. Right, he sees the, the Vida, right? Which has one horn higher than the other. Who is the two horned beast representing? The USA, right? What are the two horns of the USA? Protestantism and Republicanism. Who is ruling at the moment? Republicanism, right? Who comes up last? Protestantism. So when Protestantism is ruling over Republicanism, what is it? The image of the beast, right? It's the Sunday law. And you see how the goat comes against it and he smashes the two horns, right? Right, the constitution is broken. So you see the first two horns, gold and silver, they are gone. Right, and it was this one notable horn of the Greeks, right? So, but who is this one notable horn in history? Alexander the Great, right? So, who is the, is it at the end of the world? The king of the world, who is it? Donald Trump, right? The man with the golden head. Right, but what happens with this notable horn? It breaks in how many parts? Four, right? Let's read. So, let's read verse 8. <laughs> Inasema, na yule beberu hata, hata akajitukuza sana na alipo, na alipokuwa na nguvu pembe ile uh, kubwa ilivunjika. So what happens with it? It breaks in pieces, right? Na ilo pembe zinavunjika. But how specifically? Inavunjika aji. Toward the four winds of heaven, right? So where do we mount the four winds? And they make me cry, right? So what you see is the notable horn becomes these four horns. It changes the face, right? In some ways. Right? Because the notable horn was Trump, right? 
the United States, right, the force basically because the constitution is gone. <laughs> but you see the four are left. But what comes out of this one four? A little one, right? Right, so there comes a little one up here. Which is who? Rome, right? How did Rome begin? As a republic. Right? It ended? The dictatorship, right? So who's the nation that begins as a republic and ends as a dictatorship? USA, right? So we see how the United States comes up and it's a new phase. So, and what is this little horn doing? Or let me ask you another question. With the four, what does it say in Daniel chapter uh, 7? It's diverse, right? So it's diverse. Why is it diverse? Because it's true. Yes, but what is the second? Hmm? Remember Daniel chapter 7, the fourth beast comes up and out of the fourth, which is Rome, comes a little horn. Who is that little horn? The papacy. So the little, the fourth, right, consists out of little, two little horns. Ah, uh, yeah, well, yes, it plucks up these three. So, but what you can see, what, what, why is it diverse? When Come here first, release me. Why is it diverse? Of all the past kingdoms. Yes, a church is the first time in history the church is sitting on top of the kings. Right? Prior to this, it was just in their minds. Now she's sitting upon them. Right? You have two little horns. Right? And what is interesting about the fourth beast? Go to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel So what are teeth a symbol for in the Bible? Teeth and nails. Anybody? It's weapons. The teeth like spears and things like this. Yeah, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I just know that it says something, your teeth are like spears and things like this. It's the message, yes. So, but go to Daniel chapter 7 verse... No, we will read verse 23. Or is it 23? Oh, no. Why do I not find that verse? 18? Yeah, exactly. Verse 19. Verse 19. Verse uh, Kisha nalitaka kujua maana ya yule mnyama wa nne aliyekuwa mbele ya mbele na wenzie wote mwenye kutisha sana ambaye meno yake yalikuwa kama yalikuwa ya chuma na makucha yake ya shaba aliyekula na ku, na kuvunja vipande vipande na kuyakanyaga mabaki ya miguu yake So how were the teeth teeth and the uh, nails looking like Iron and brass, right? So you have the clay, which is the church. But this other little horn, right, which is the United States. 
But it says it's iron and brass, right? Because this is the United States, the only um, nation who's doing this persecution work in here. It's the United States, the only nation who persecutes in here. No, it's, it's the whole world, right? Yes. Yes, right? It's worldwide the sun It's not just in the United States, otherwise it wouldn't be tested. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what I said. Right, okay, so you see that this little one, right, the fourth piece, iron and brass. So, and what is this kingdom doing in verse Daniel 8, verse 10 to 12? Daniel 8, 10 to 12. Yes, please. Yes, please. Ya kuteketezwa, ya kuteketezwa ya uh, daima Na mahala pake patakatifu uh, Mahala pake patakatifu pake uh, Paka angushwa chini Na jeshi uh, li, lika, likatolewa kwake pamoja na sadaka li, Ya kuteketezwa ya daima Kwa sababu ya maposa Na yu ikaangusha uh, ika, uh, ika iangusha uh, kweli hata chini Ika so, what does it say here? Right, it, um, a host is given to it, right? The daily sacrifice is taken away and it goes against the prince of hosts, right? So, what is the work it is doing? Max, when this little one comes up, the daily, right, which is this Year, uh, gone. Right, an army is given to the Pope. And they go and murder good people, right? So, or they go forward against the murder. So, what you see is basically that, or, or hope that you could see, right, is that. Iron and uh, brass, right, in here. Uh, right, it's representing Goliath, which is this flat. Right, and it's coming against you, coming against everybody. Right, and in order to survive, you have to be in the ark. It doesn't mean that nobody will die here, right? But, but you have to be in the ark, you know, you have to have your, you have to be faithful, right, in order to be uh, saved. Okay, so I hope that you could follow at least. And what I want to do in the next presentation, I want to show why they are coming um, against um, those people. Okay, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we give uh, you thanks for your uh, wonderful work and to show to us what is ahead of us. And I pray that you may help us really to be prepared so that we can face Goliath and 
that we don't go in our own strength, but that you go with us. So I pray that you may fulfill the promise in each individual here. We ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.